This is the way we're going to introduce Isa. Aisa Muhammad, a uh, performing artist, Dearborn native, and uh, uh, an activist, has uh, been very vocal both through his performing art and through his political statement uh, on social media. Aisa, uh, thanks for coming today. I know last time you were sick, you weren't able yeah, to make me. it. I really wanted to make it last time, and I just I completely lost my voice. Uh, it was during Ramadan. I missed a couple of days from fasting. Like, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah Ramadan Kareem. I wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit. I want to document some of your experience. Now, you've been in the heart and center of, of the protests taking place. Uh, tell us, not everyone has been attending these uh, protests. Tell us your uh, you know, point of view from inside this protest and your experience as an activist so far uh, through the, 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 this time. Well, first off, I want to say that uh, I appreciate people calling me an activist, but I truly don't feel like I do enough to even be called an activist. I show up to the protest. I, I just do what I can, you know. But from showing up to the protest, what I have seen, because... For, for for most of the world, this, the Palestine situation is brand new to them. They're just now discovering it. For us, for a lot of us that grew up Muslim and or grew up in America, Arab or Muslims, this is something that we grew up with, you know? So we always were fighting for Palestine. I remember being a little kid and we had like, in like fifth grade in front of our, uh, the middle school in the South End, I grew up uh, over there. And in front of Salano, we're protesting free, free Palestine. I'm like, what are we doing standing on this corner? What's that gonna make? You know, what kind of noise is that gonna make? But fast forward 14 years later, I'm in Washington, D.C., and there's a sea of people from all over the world, from every ethnicity, from every background, all cheering free, free Palestine and people that have had enough with the current system and just taking a back seat and allowing people to completely destroy the fabrics of our society and to pin people against each other. So what I've been seeing at these protests, because just like David said, it's making a difference. I know people will say, what is going in the street and screaming uh, do? I tell them, imagine if we weren't doing that, how bad it would have been. And imagine the pressure or imagine without the pressure, how much more of these people would get away with. And just like the Vietnamese uh, or what was going on in Vietnam, it took many, many, many years. It took over 10 years of them fighting for to get the liberation. This is the first time because I also protested back in 2021. Right. And there was also, like I said, for a lot of people that don't know for them, this is new after October 7. But uh, Gaza was getting bombed in 2021 as well and there was massive protests that came out of that and during that time I remember Joe Biden came to Detroit and we protested and I wasn't even planning to speak but somehow I ended up with a mic and screamed until I lost my voice for the next three days from giving a speech and Joe Biden was here and when the reporters asked him you know what is uh what do you have to say about this he basically said because he was testing one of the dry, uh, the cars in the ford um factory down the street he basically told them stand in front of the car and after i drive i'll let you know how i feel basically just completely ignoring the situation but now everywhere he goes every time he tries to do anything like he can't get away from it anymore and that's because now we're it's continuous in 2021 after that protest i said i'm never going to protest again i feel like this was a waste of time i'm tired after the next day everyone went away for me i've been making music since 2017 and when i started making music it was about this type of stuff it was always about either political or Palestine has always been something i spoke about and i kind of got away from it after a few years because i felt like i'm talking to an empty room no one's listening no one cares but like i said fast forward to 2024 the entire world is standing up and to the people who are still thinking that it doesn't make a difference, what was the saying? Uh, I'm only one person, what could I do? Said seven billion people. It takes us to come, every individual has to make the decision that I can make a change and show up. Because if everyone says that they can make a change and they all show up and they're all on the same mission, then you will make a change. But if everyone is standing and saying, oh, I can't do nothing, I'm gonna leave it for the next person, you show up and it's just a few people, but even the few people that do show up, they make a difference. 
Thank you. Uh, before I let the audience join the discussion, I want to ask you, what are some of the epiphanies or, or things that, that affected you during the protest, things that you saw you weren't expecting or, or things that, you know, stayed with you? So uh, I'm not sure if you guys seen uh, on the news on the city of Dearborn two days ago, they stopped a car caravan. Uh, there was a protest we had and basically we've done a few car caravans and, you know, we'll ride through the streets, ton of cars with the flags will go on the freeway sometimes they'll drive a little slow it'll cause a little traffic but you know that's a part of protest and the point is disruption yesterday all we we're doing is driving down michigan avenue we're going to go to downtown come back around nothing too crazy as we're driving down michigan avenue we're seeing a lot of cars and stuff going on but we get to i start seeing a helicopter i'm like I hope I know that's not for us riding in this little 30 car caravan just driving down the street. And now I'm seeing undercover cars and I'm seeing all these different cruisers coming around and I'm in the front. So I'm seeing everything firsthand. And we come on to 14th Street on Michigan Avenue just before Corktown. And I swear to God, I seen like a no was probably like four, 14, 15 cruisers all swarm in like 50 cops all jumping out of their cars and running to the car. I'm like. No way they're doing all this for I had to turn around and make sure like more people didn't join. There's like 20 cars, 20 of us just riding slowly down Michigan Avenue with our flags out. And they shut down all the roads. They shut down entrances to the freeways. They shut down downtown. And I was like, bro, you guys really did all this just for us? At that point, I was honored. I was like, go ahead and arrest me. Make sure you guys get some good pictures, you know? <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't get arrested. Alhamdulillah, there was a few other people that did get arrested. They gave everybody tickets. They gave me a ticket basically for, they said, blocking a lane and using an electronic while on my phone. So in my head, like the epiphany that I had is it really, these people are really, really dedicated to completely silencing us and completely stopping us. And they're so scared that this little group this little group of people just driving peacefully, had them bring out the entire police force, fuel a helicopter. How much of our tax dollars got used for them to fuel that helicopter, for them to just drive over and watch us? All this, it's crazy because the, the people that call for peace are the people that are being subjected to the most aggression, the irony of it. Right. So what I've seen is that at the end of the day, the people protect the people and the only way that change is going to happen is if we keep applying pressure and we keep fighting until change comes because nothing happens overnight. Just like with anything, a tree is going to take many years to grow. And if we keep doing what we're doing, inshallah, we'll have a tree with many fruit that everybody could eat in regardless of where you're from, what kind of, you know, what your skin color is or what you believe in. Thank you, Arisa. Just to clarify for the recording, yeah. uh, I heard that uh, they were worried that you're going to block the Ambassador Bridge because that's what happened earlier in the day in San Francisco. Was there any intention for the caravan to block uh, the ambassador bridge? Well, not. you're the leading car, so... <laughs> I was the leading car, but they just told me that to be in front. Right. Any, uh, any question from the audience uh, to, for Isa? Comments? Okay, Isa, one more thing. Uh, were you... I'm, I'm sure you were either Kim Young or you were born in the United States. Yeah. You feel your, your young generation that has grown in the United States, usually not very engaged in politics. This gives a lot of hope, especially when Palestinian children see that and, and Arab children see that. They see, and children really all over the world, when they get an inspiration from American children actually being engaged and involved with uh, social justice uh, and political justice uh, issues. Where do you feel? feel this stems from in 2021 the largest protest for palestine came out mm -hmm. you would expect that dearborn in the 60s and 70s these are the most engaged people politically but surprisingly the youngest generation is the most engaged and coming out uh, in droves for for palestine what does this tell you how do you reflect this message uh, I was, because of, you know, the first generations that came here, they're just coming here for survival. A lot of them came with $20 in their pocket and the clothes on the back if, if, if they had that, you know. The famous story. You know, so a generation or two later, we're born and we grew up here. So we have, we're full citizens. I tell people all the time, my family's from Yemen and I am proud of my Yemeni heritage, but I grew up here. I'm a born American citizen. If I go to Yemen, they're going to make fun of me and call me, you know, you know how like sometimes people make fun of people who come overseas, you know, like over there, they're, they're going to joke around like that. But in my heart, I, 
I love America, but to love America, I need it to be, I want it to be a country that I'm proud of. I want it to be what it says it stands for. And I want it to be a country that's not a war machine and going and destroying all of the world and causing havoc at the expense of our backs. Cause I could get into, it's a whole, you know, deep uh, conversation, but basically I want the best for America and the best for America is peace, is taking the better road, is changing of the system that applies, you know, that, uh, basically takes advantage of its citizens. And our generation is a generation that's more connected more than ever. We have our phones, we have um, more resources to knowledge and history and really being able to do the homework to know what's going on. And we're mad because at the end of the day, the last generation didn't do a good job taking care of America and all this colonialism and all this uh, war and the uh, military industrial complex is done a number of on soci our society and our generation is the one that's paying for it. So now they're making an economy full of young, angry people that have no nothing but time now to protest and make stuff happen. It's going to make stuff happen. Thank you. I know I'm from all over the place. With these no problem. No, amazing. How, well, who are some of your American uh, role models? My role models? Uh, from American history. So I think I think the way I'm the way I am is because I started listening to music when I was like in seventh grade like really starting to listen to hip-hop and my first rapper that i was listening to was tupac. tupac and if anyone knows about tupac you know he he was a very f the system type of guy you know but he spoke a lot of truth in his uh raps and it was in a very aggressive um uh, very blunt manner, straightforward, which you know some people might get offended but we're talking about people's lives and people being killed and massacred. I don't know the, the biggest problem. I feel like sometimes people want to get on and have a very uh, formal conversation. It's like, no, we got to get straight to the point, you know? So a lot of, uh, a lot of my heroes came from like people like Tupac and people that just stood for justice, you know, uh, Malcolm X, of course, uh, I would say Abraham Lincoln, just a bit. Well, I don't know too, too much, but he's just a big guy to mention. But mainly like Tupac and Malcolm X for real. Thank you, Isa. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.